The main objectives of this section are to make the operators able to describe components and systems which should be operating during startup, describe components and systems which should be in standby mode during startup, recognize the components to operate during startup, describe what actually happens within the system during startup, describe the critical parameters and know where to find the measuring instruments, rectifying actions in case of deviation. Starting preparation after a short period of standstill. Starting preparation after a long period of standstill. Stop routines. Before starting the engine after a period of standstill shorter than 24 hours, the following routine should be performed to ensure a safe startup of the engine. Vent the fuel oil system. Check jacket cooling water. For start on HFO, check fuel oil and nozzle oil temperatures. Check control air pressure. Prime the main lubricating oil system. Check for cooling water leakage. Clean rocker arm lubricating oil filter. Check starting air pressure. Check start interlocks. Click on the buttons to learn more. If the fuel system has been disconnected, it will be necessary to expel trapped air in the system. Disconnect the high pressure pipe between some of the fuel injection pumps and fuel injection valves. Wait until only oil comes out of the pipe before reconnecting. Reconnect. Check the cooling water system. Check jacket cooling water. Start on marine diesel oil. Check that the jacket cooling water temperature is above 50 degrees Celsius for a warm standby starting. This makes the engine ready for instant loading to 100%. Between 0 degrees and 50 degrees Celsius, the engine can be cold started on marine diesel oil. The engine has to be loaded gradually until the minimum jacket water temperature of 50 degrees Celsius is reached. If the jacket water temperature is below 0 degrees Celsius, the only starting attempts should be emergency starts. Requirements for start on heavy fuel oil. Check that the jacket water cooling water temperature is at least 50 degrees Celsius. If it's not, run the heater until it reaches that temperature. For start on heavy fuel oil, check fuel oil and nozzle oil temperatures. In addition to the jacket cooling water temperature, the following temperature demands have to be met to start on heavy fuel oil. The temperature of the heavy fuel oil has to be as required for the fuel oil injection viscosity. The nozzle oil temperature has to be 85 degrees Celsius plus minus 5 degrees. Check the control air pressure. Ensure that the pressure is between 5 and 7 bar. Check the lubricating oil systems. Check for cooling water leakage. Clean rocker arm lubricating oil filter. Click on the handle to clean the filter element.
Check starting air pressure. Check start interlocks. When starting the engine after a period of standstill longer than 24 hours, the following routine should be performed to ensure a safe startup of the engine. If the fuel system has been disconnected, it will be necessary to expel trapped air in the system. Disconnect the high-pressure pipe between some of the fuel injection pumps and fuel injection valves. Wait until only oil comes out of the pipes before reconnecting. Click on the buttons to learn more. Reconnect. Check the cooling water system. Open the lower temperature and the high temperature cooling water valves. Check the high temperature cooling water level in the expansion tank. If the engine has been drained, the high temperature system must be vented. Start on marine diesel oil. Check that the jacket cooling water temperature is above 50 degrees Celsius for a warm standby starting. This makes the engine ready for instant loading to 100%. Between 0 degrees and 50 degrees Celsius, the engine can be cold started on marine diesel oil. The engine has to be loaded gradually until the minimum jacket water temperature of 50 degrees Celsius is reached. If the jacket water temperature is below 0 degrees Celsius, the only starting attempts should be emergency starts. Requirements for start on heavy fuel oil. Check that the jacket cooling water temperature is at least 50 degrees Celsius. If it's not, run the heater until it reaches that temperature. For start on heavy fuel oil, check fuel oil and nozzle oil temperatures. In addition to the jacket cooling water temperature, the following temperature demands have to be met to start on heavy fuel oil. The temperature of the heavy fuel oil has to be as required for the fuel oil injection viscosity. The nozzle oil temperature has to be 85 degrees Celsius plus minus 5 degrees. Check the control air system. Check the control air module. Ensure that the control air pressure is between 5 and 7 bar. Open the control air quickly to avoid that the solenoid valves are placed in the center position. Drain the control air module. Check the lubricating oil systems. Check for cooling water leakage. Clean rocker arm lubricating oil filter. Clean the filter in the rocker arm lubricating oil system by turning the handle. Click on the handle to clean the filter element. Cleaning of the filter element is now done. Check control shaft with linkages. Check and oil the control shaft with transmission linkages to ensure good movability.
check the starting air pressure. Check start interlocks. Start the engine. Click the key switch to prepare for start. Then press the start button. Check all manometers. Click on various buttons for details. Check the start air piping. If a pipe becomes hot, this indicates a defective starting valve, which must be replaced immediately. There are two ways of stopping the engine. Auto stop. Click on the buttons to learn more. Auto stop. The control system stops the engine by making the actuator set the fuel rack position to zero and by activating the pneumatic stop cylinders. No valves should be manually operated and electrical switches remain in auto mode. Manual stop. The engine can be stopped from the PLC cabinet or from the engine panel with a switch marked stop. This will make the actuator set the fuel rack to zero position, which will result in an immediate stop. When the engine is idle, this is regarded as a normal stop. When the engine is running on load, it will be regarded as an emergency stop, because the abrupt halt may cause damage to the engine and generator. In case of any labour on or close to the engine, the following should be done after the engine has stopped. Switch off the key switch on the engine panel. Close the starting air valve. Put up signs, do not start engine, maintenance in progress, in every place the engine can be started from. The engine has to be cooled. Wait one hour before starting the labour. Stop the system pumps. Drain and close valves in the involved systems. You are performing a daily check of the engine. Then you discover that the exhaust temperature of one of the cylinders is too high compared to the others even though it is not triggering the alarm. It is important to find out why the exhaust temperature is too high. What would you do? Specify the procedure by dragging the actions so they are listed in a suitable order. Suggested procedure for too high exhaust temperature. Check the exhaust temperatures in the monitoring system and compare this to the temperature reported on the engine panel. Click on the buttons. If these temperatures deviate, one of the thermocouples is probably defective. However, in check the position of the fuel rack on the fuel oil pump. Compare the position of the fuel rack to the original position from the start-up of the engine as shown in the form from 
Ulstein Bergen service personnel. If the position is changed, return it to its original state. How to change the position of the fuel rack? Open the screw. Change the position of the fuel rack. Close the screw. For HFO operation, check that the fuel rack and control sleeve are not stuck. If the fuel rack or control sleeve are sticky and do not move easily because of dirt or solidified heavy fuel, the fuel injection pump cleaning system has to be checked and started. Check the linkage from the actuator to the fuel rack. Check that the screws and nuts in the linkage have not loosened. Check for wear on the linkage. Check that all flexible arms and or linkages are moving easily. Measure max pressure on all cylinders. The engine must be running at 100% load when measuring the maximum pressure. Fasten the pressure gauge on the indicator valve at the side of the cylinder head. Open the indicator valve by using the hand wheel. Note the maximum pressure. Close the indicative valve by using the hand wheel. Remove the pressure gauge and repeat the sequence for all cylinders. Calculate the average maximum pressure. If the cylinder in question has a maximum pressure which is less than 3 bar from average, it is probably an incidental variation, and no further action is necessary at this time. However, you should still monitor the exhaust temperatures regularly. Check the rotor caps on the exhaust valves. The purpose of the rotor caps is to prolong the lifetime of the exhaust valves by rotating them. Mark the retainer cap on the rotocops on the cylinder head, for instance with a white pen. If the valve is not rotating, the rotocap is broken and has to be replaced. Stop the engine. The engine must be stopped before you proceed. Check the air inlet and exhaust valves. Check the clearances on the air inlet and exhaust valves. This can be done on warm or cold engines. Use a dial gauge to measure the inlet and exhaust valve clearances. Place the feeler gauge accurately. Use a screwdriver to bend the brackets and or transfer arm. Compare the clearances to the maximum clearances given in Ulstein Bergen's service manual. Check the nozzle and or nozzle pin. The easiest way to test the nozzle on the problem cylinder is to Switch the fuel oil injection valve with another. Start the engine. When the engine is running on 100% load and the exhaust temperatures have stabilised, observe if the problem follows the injection valve. If the problem follows the injector, stop the engine and replace the valve and perform a functional test as described in Ulstein Bergen's service manual. You are performing a daily check of the engine. Then you discover that the exhaust temperature of one of the cylinders is too low compared to the others, even though it is not triggering the alarm. It is important to find out why the exhaust temperature is too low. What would you do? 
specify the procedure by dragging the actions so they are listed in a suitable order. Check the exhaust temperatures in the monitoring system and compare these to the temperature reported on the engine panel. If these temperatures deviate, click on the buttons to learn more. However, in some cases this procedure will not reveal the error. In those cases, the most probable errors are Injection is too far advanced. The pre-injection angle has to be adjusted. Faulty fuel oil injection pump. The pump must be overhauled or changed. Check the position of the fuel rack on the fuel oil pump. Compare the position of the fuel rack to the original position from the start-up of the engine as shown in the form from Ulstein Bergen service personnel. If the position is changed, return it to its original state. How to change the position of the fuel rack? Open the screw. Change the position of the fuel rack. Close the screw. For HFO operation, check that the fuel rack and control sleeve are not stuck. If the fuel rack or control sleeve are sticky and do not move easily because of dirt or solidified heavy fuel, the fuel injection pump cleaning system has to be checked and started. Check that the screws and nuts in the linkage have not loosened. Check for wear on the linkage. Check that all flexible arms and linkages are moving easily. The engine must be running at 100% load when measuring the maximum pressure. Fasten the pressure gauge on the indicator valve at the side of the cylinder head. Open the indicator valve by using the hand wheel. Note the maximum pressure. Close the indicative valve by using the hand wheel. Remove the pressure gauge and repeat the sequence for all cylinders. Calculate the average maximum pressure. If the cylinder in question has a maximum pressure which is less than 3 bar from average, it is probably an incidental variation and no further action is necessary at this time. However, you should still monitor the exhaust temperatures regularly. Check for fuel oil leakage in the high pressure pipe. Check for possible cooling water leakage. Check the water level in the expansion tank. Check the exhaust gas. If it is light and smoky, it indicates that there is water in the cylinder. If water leakage is suspected, the cylinder head and the cylinder have to be checked. Check all gaskets and replace them if necessary. Stop the engine. The engine must be stopped before you proceed. The easiest way to test the nozzle on the problem cylinder is to switch the fuel oil injection valve with another on the engine. Start the engine. When the engine is running on 100% load and the exhaust temperatures have stabilized, observe if the problem follows the injection valve. If the problem follows the injection valve, stop the engine and replace the valve. Check for clogged nozzle holes 
and perform a functional test, as described in Ulstein Bergen's service manual.